Hello. Let's tweak this sample a little more. We have an instruction here, which retrieves value from memory, modifies this value, and stores it back. On the other hand, we have also retrieved the same value from memory here, so perhaps we could avoid retrieving it twice and just modify this value in register here and store it into memory. This works just as well. We can also tweak this loop a little. Instead of checking for zero here, we can check for zero as soon as we read this value from memory. And when we see zero, we just jump directly to the end. And now to keep looping, we can just use unconditional jump. So we always jump here back to the beginning of this loop and we can only get out of this loop uh, when we see zero here, then we jump out of it. And now we can modify value of AL here and here is where we try another trick. Instead of comparing here, let's subtract. So after such subtraction, A becomes zero, B becomes one and so on. And character Z becomes well, we can compute this. Z is 5a, a is 4, 1. This is decimal 25. So here we can just compare with 25. And we jump when this number is not in range from 0 to 25. So here we know that we have a number from 0 to 25 and we can add a code of this character. We could write it this way or this way there is no difference. Let's see that it works. There is <clears throat> an interesting thing that happened here. Because we reduced this uh, comparison to be just a single jump. And we could do that because we have moved this entire range of characters that interests us. We have moved it to the beginning of the table by subtracting. Now A is 0. And so all the characters that were below it have been wrapped around to the very high numbers here above. For example, when we had uh, this character with code for O and we subtracted for 1 from it. Then we this wraps around and we get 255, which is the largest value that can fit in byte. And because of that, every character that is not one of these 26 that interest us is, uh, after the subtraction, becomes number larger than 25. This is why we can just go with a simple, single comparison and jump.
and we can also replace this number 25 with this formula because this is how we obtained this number now this trick demonstrates uh, how we can use to our advantage that the numbers wrap around when we subtract or add them on the other hand this might look a bit strange because when we subtract a larger number from a smaller one then we might expect that the result is going to be a negative number and not an even larger number but this is in fact just a matter of interpretation For example, let's uh, take a look at this operation. You may already know the result. So 255 is value FF and when we add 1 to it we get 0. So it appears that we could treat ff as minus one because it behaves as if it was minus one when we add one to it we get zero so at least for practical purposes we could treat this number as minus one and this is simply another interpretation let's take a closer look at various bit values when we have eight bits when they are all zero then this is simply a zero when we set the first one then this is number one and so on when all bits are set this is the largest number 255 but as we have just seen we can also view this as minus one this is another possible interpretation of the same value. Just like we could uh, take a sequence of bits and give it another meaning like a character. Then in a similar manner we can take a sequence of bits and give it another meaning depending on whether we want to have negative numbers or not. The only problem here is that when we want to have negative numbers then we need to be able to tell them from the positive ones. So we need some simple way of telling whether the number should be interpreted as negative or positive. And for this we use the value of the highest bit. If we take the largest number that has still zero here this is 127 we can verify this here and we are going to cut off here and all the numbers that have this bit set are going to be the negative ones For example, when we subtract 1 here, this is minus 2, and so on, until we reach the smallest positive, uh, the smallest negative number, that is the smallest number that has this bit set, which is minus 128. So, under this interpretation, we cannot have numbers that are larger than this maximum one that still has this bit zero. And we call this interpretation a signed interpretation because this highest bit is a signed bit. It simply indicates that the number is negative when this bit is set. And 
for example, when we subtract uh, from zero and we get a negative number, then we have, in addition to carry here, we have this bit set. This is signed bit. And this is in fact simply a copy of the highest bit of the result. So this bit is set when the result has signed bit set. So the, when the result is negative under signed interpretation. There exists a conditional jump for detection whether the number is result is negative or or not negative. But this condition does not solve all the problems. In the unsigned case, for example, when we add uh, something to 225, then we go out of range. And this is indicated by carry flag. And in the case of signed numbers, when the largest possible numbers is 127, then the carry flag does not help us. We have added these numbers together. The carry flag is not set, but the sign flag is set. The result is a negative number, and we know that we added two positive numbers together, so something's wrong. And the fact that something is wrong is indicated by this overflow flag. The meaning of this flag is simply that the sign flag is not what it should be for the result. We added two positive numbers, so the sign of the result should be also uh, zero, but it is one, so overflow happened and overflow flag is set. Similarly, if we add two negative numbers, and the result does not fit in range, then this overflow should happen. We can jump if overflow flag is set. Let's jump somewhere just to test it. Now we added two negative numbers together. The result has sign bit not set and the overflow flag is set. So the overflow flag means that the sign bit is incorrect, that the result is really negative but it does not fit into this register. And so the jump is taken because we have detected an overflow. And now, what about comparing numbers? When we use compare instruction, this is, as we know, the same as subtract, with only difference that uh, the register is not updated with the result, but we have all the flags. And we have jumps like jump if less or jump if greater which are for the sign case. In general, for unsigned we had jumps like jump if below, jump if above, jump if below or equal, jump if above or equal. And for signed numbers we have jump if less, jump if greater, jump if less or equal, jump if greater or equal.
So let's jump with less. And what does this jump mm, check? Well, when we subtract two numbers, then to see whether uh, the first uh, the first one is less than second one, then we need to check whether the result is a negative number. And when the result is negative number, well, sine flag might be set, but we also need overflow to not occur. And there is another case. Our sign flag is not set, but there is overflow. Because when the overflow flag is set, it means that sign flag is incorrect, is the opposite of the actual expected result. So these are two cases when the result is a negative number. Simply one is when there is overflow and one when there is uh, one when there is not. And this condition can be simply rewritten as sign flag being a different value than overflow flag, because when one is uh, set, then the other one has to be zeroed. So sign flag should be different from overflow flag, and then this condition is true. Let's check it for some values. Let's compare 10 to minus 2. We see that the sign bit is 0 and overflow is 0. So overflow being 0 tells us that the sign bit is correct. So the result is a positive number. So this jump should not be taken. And it is not. Let's now try with minus 4. Compare minus 4 to minus 2. This time the jump was taken because the sign flag is set and the overflow flag is still cleared. So uh, the sign bit is correct and the number is negative. And finally we, we can compare whether this number is less than 127 so now we have overflow flag set so the sign bit is wrong so even though the sign bit is zero the number is negative so this jump should be taken And it is. That's all for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time.